primarily, in most of it, you know, our bigger speakers, we use primarily ceramic magnets, which are going to be, you know, they're fairly easy to produce. They're, they're, they're really strong for their size, but not the strongest out there, because that's going to be, once again, the Neo and the uh, specialized Neo magnets. But the, the ceramic magnets are a very interesting material where basically it takes a lot of heat and a lot of pressure to make the magnets. So we start talking about magnet ring sizes and, you know, you start talking about the uh, Solo X woofer up here. We use a triple stack magnet. Well, why would we use a triple stack magnet? Why don't we just use one magnet that is that thick? The problem is it's very, very difficult and very expensive to produce thicker and thicker magnets. So what we do is we're able to stack multiple layers together to get an added benefit so we can get the same performance but at a much reduced cost. Now, most magnets, the average thickness that you can make a magnet cost effectively is going to be between 20 and 25 millimeters. That's three quarters of an inch to an inch. That's going to be the maximum range that you can you know, get the, the ceramic pressed into, into a good form of magnet. Now, the other question is, well, if that's the case, why don't you use multiple smaller layers of magnets? So once again, we start talking about a 24 millimeter thick magnet, which is about an inch tall. What if I had two 12 millimeter magnets? Now, there are times when you'll see manufacturers do this. They'll stack multiple smaller thickness of magnets in there, and that really has to do with, you know, the cost, the tooling, you know, what they have access to. But generally, you know, speaking, three quarters to an inch is about the maximum thickness you can get out of a ceramic magnet without going to the extremes of, of you know, ultra high heat, ultra high pressure. And, you know, once again, it all comes down in being cost effectiveness. Now, one of the problems when you do stack magnets together, such as you see here, and this speaker uses a triple stack magnet, is between each of those magnets, there's actually a little insulation layer called air in between. They're, they're put together as close together, and sometimes they can be bonded together with glue. In fact, they have to be bonded together with glue. That'll seal up some of the air gaps. But just like anything else, if there's any gap in that material, no matter how small it is, you're going to lose some magnetic energy, or once again, you're going to lose some heat conduction, just like we have you know, in a back plate and a, and a center pole piece. And that's part of the whole magnetic circuit, and we're going to get a lot more in detail. So the other disadvantage of having a multi-stack magnet is you can have air leaks to the magnet, which do affect the performance of the speakers. So we try to use as thick of magnets as possible without getting too thick that they're not cost effective, and make sure the magnets are bonded together extremely well and they're done airtight. So why? Why would we make a, you know, a, a magnet and start stacking layers on top of each other? Well, it really comes down to a couple things. It's not just that you know, the deeper the magnet, it's better. In fact, the more magnets you stack on top, the more decreasing the return is on magnet, magnetism. So yes, you know, putting a second magnet on there is going to give a little bit more you know, strength in the magnetic field. Putting another one on, it's going to give a little bit less than you know, what you had by adding the, the second one. By the time you get to the fourth one, it's almost you know, just a waste of, of energy. So why do companies put multi-stack magnets on speakers you know, versus just one really good you know, like inch thick magnet? And a lot of it has to do with cone travel. We want speakers to travel as far as possible. We want to push that speaker to get as much cone movement as possible, to move as much air, to get as much bass as possible. So if this magnet was only an inch thick, as we see here, you wouldn't have a lot of travel because that voice coil form would actually hit the back plate and stop the speaker from moving. And it's going to sound pretty bad when it does that. So by having multiple stack magnets, I can get more cone travel out of that speaker. Now, one of the other things we can do is we can bump the back plate. You see, we've got this nice little curve on the back plate. In fact, some of our speakers, there's actually a dip right around the voice coil. And that's called a bumped back plate, and that gives more cone travel. But there are practical limits to how much you can bump the back plate before it gets really cost ineffective. Because forging these huge you know, metal slugs into back plates and pole pieces takes a lot of energy and a lot of heat and a lot of pressure. Well, one of the things we can do versus having to really force the, the material into making a really deep bump back plate is we can stack more magnets on there because that's going to be a lot more cost effective. And let's face it, guys, it just looks cooler with bigger magnets, but it's not necessarily always the case. Don't always assume that the bigger the magnet, the more powerful the speaker. 
is even if you use the same type of materials, that may not necessarily be true.